What you have to realize is that we're all just a mouse that a cat has by the tail. Every single move we make, from the mundane to the monumental, the red light that we stop at or run, the people we have sex with or won't with us, the airplanes that we ride or walk out of, it's all part of death's sadistic design leading to the grave. Design? Does that mean if you figure out the design, you can cheat death? Alex, you've already done that by walking off the plane. Your friend's departure shows that death has a new design for all of you. Now you have to figure out how. Play your hunch, Alex, if you think you can get away with it. But remember, the risk of cheating the plan, of disrespecting the design, could incite a fury that could terrorize even the Grim Reaper. And you don't even want to fuck with that Mac Daddy. <laughs> And welcome to the Ancient Slumber Podcast, show number 37. My name is Chris Ward and I am bloody hot because I've had to close the windows because my neighbours have been fucking noisy. Anyway, joining me today is Mr. Myron Schmidt. How you doing, Myron? Chris, how are you? I've got to say I'm very hot. <laughs> are, aren't your neighbours always noisy? Yes, but they, it turns on more when I come outside to do stuff. <laughs> of course it does. I don't know how of they course. how they fucking it. Honestly, there was nothing to do. I thought I'll come outside. I'll set up for the podcast. As soon as I plug my microphone and they start fucking hammering a wall. <laughs> Every time. And my son you says guys... they, my son says they're not like it in the week when I'm at work and I'm not here. He says they're perfectly quiet. So they do it for me. Do you guys have like a standalone house or do you have a shared wall? No shared wall, semi detached. I gotcha. I gotcha. <laughs> I've usually got a semi at most times, to be honest. <laughs> I probably didn't need to know that. Maybe some did, not me. I haven't right at this minute, though. You're right. Good. 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 <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't have to go there then. No, no, no. no. <laughs> but as I'm as I'm hot, because I've had to close all the windows, I might have to start taking layers off. Okay, turn your camera off, please. <laughs> <laughs> as if I'd subject you to that. Right. Right. Uh, anyway, so how are we doing? We haven't recorded for a while. We have not recorded for a while. All down to me. I hold full responsibility. My fault. Well, it happens, right? Life gets in the way. It does. Mine life does. Gets in, life gets Yes, yes. That's just mine. Life <laughs> gets in the way. Uh, doing good. Doing good. Are you guys still in lockdown in the UK or what's going on? I don't know. Because, <laughs> I mean, you, you go to work every day, right? Well, I haven't stopped. So I've, right. worked, I've worked all through it. So it makes no difference to me. Because you guys actually converted to making sanitizer and things like that, correct, for a oh, while? Oh, yes, yes. Oh, yeah, we're still doing yeah. that, still doing that. Okay, okay. Yeah, we were in, we were in lockdown here until late late June. Yeah. And then um, things started to open up a bit. But uh, it's still, people are still really super nervous about going out. I would be in America at the moment. Oh, yeah, yeah. Is, it, your, uh, is your is your coffee shop open yet? It is. It's it, been open. I was just going to say it's actually a tea shop, believe it or not, of American with a tea shop. Sorry, but, tea shop. But uh, in the last couple of days, we've had quite a few customers. But up until the last few days, it's been really super, super spot. Do you have any of our listeners come in? Does anyone say, hey, it's Myron? <laughs> I don't think so yet. Uh, <laughs> I keep waiting. I want that. I want... I want someone to come into your shop and name you. Name and shame you. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah, name and shame. Oh, <laughs> boy. 
No, no one has come into that list yet. Okay. No, no, I'm still waiting over here for someone to recognize me. <laughs> yeah, Scott. But maybe my mom, wait, my mom doesn't even listen. Never mind. <laughs> I don't want mine to listen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah, yeah, so the world's still a shithole. Yep. Uh, we're still carrying on, sort of. Yep, we've got, we've got Boris versus Donald, both idiots, both, you know, taking the country, not places we want to go. Yeah, yeah. What, oh, dear. What can you do? What can you do? Well, we could just, over here, we just have to grin and bear it until the inevitable scandal comes out. <laughs> right. But you, you've got your, um, uh, I was, was going to say erections. You haven't got erections. You've got elections in November. It's not surprised this present, I don't. Well, no, it's uh, not that yes. exciting, is it? No. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes, we do have elections in November. Well, that will be interesting, won't it? It will be, it will be interesting. It, it will be super interesting. And because of, you know, all this COVID stuff, hmm. there's been no campaign stuff. There's really been no, not a whole lot going on compared to other election years. So it's going to be super interesting as it gets closer to November, what's going to happen. That's true. Normally you get months and months of campaigning and all sorts, don't you? Yeah, 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 yeah we do. My favorite picture so far, I don't even know if that's true or not, because half the stuff people post on social media is, you know, everybody who failed high school science is now an expert in viruses. That's oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right. But the, the one that I liked the best was um, the picture of Air Force One in an airport, and there's like four <laughs> it's one of those that you kind of hope is true. Well, yeah. You know, you know. And it, you know, what's funny is and not everybody is all bad. And, and Trump has done some uh, some positive things. You have to give people their due, right? But uh, I guess know, so. Can, can you list these positive things? <laughs> yeah, he's done some decent work on trade. He's done, he's, uh, you know, he's, ah, he's, done, he's done decent work on stuff that benefits him. <laughs> yes, but as long as it benefits us too, that's all right. Well, yes, yes, but uh, well, I'm sure, I'm sure we'll find out come November. Uh, uh, Boris has got to have done at least one good thing. Um, let me think. Um, other than provide entertainment. Well, it's not entertaining anymore. That's the thing. <laughs> has he brought eye health to the forefront, or is that his aid? Oh, that'll be his aid. It won't be him. <laughs> He's fucking useless. <laughs> Oh, but they goodness. all are. In fairness, they all are. It's it, it's not like I could sit here and I mean my personal politics, but it's not like I could sit here and say Boris is an absolute cretin. Get rid of him. We need to put this person in instead because there right. is, there is no credible alternative. Right, right. From whatever party. So exactly. And we got it's the same here. I mean, there's just on both sides of the fence. There's just we're surrounded by idiots in politics. Yeah, it's, if, which idiot's going to do the less damage? Is correct. What it comes That's down exactly. to. That's what it comes down to is, yep. But, uh, but yeah, but idiots breed idiots. And, you know, I look at some, I mean, we all, social media blows things up, obviously. But I've looked at some of these uh, Trump supporters online and their little videos and attacking <laughs> people in shops. And fuck me, man. It's scary, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it is. It is. I can hear your neighbor's dog. Oh, that's that fucking dog. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting myself an air <laughs> rifle. Fuck it. I love animals, but I hate that fucking dog. Can you guys buy air rifles over there? Oh, I'll get one. Don't worry about that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not going down to Asda to get it. Put it like that. <laughs> oh, boy. Anyway, we're not a politics podcast. No, not at all. So, I, in all seriousness, are things like BB guns, air rifles with pellets, are they illegal in the UK? No, you can get them. You can get them. Okay, okay. You just can't get ones that fire bullets. Yeah. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Which is sometimes better, because an air rifle just... They do enough damage to make it hurt, but not enough to do anything serious. Right, right, right. Whereas right, if right. you smack them around the back of the head with the butt of the rifle, it doesn't matter, does it? <laughs> Whether it's live firing or not. Right. <laughs> exactly. I was watching... Uh, I was watching... What did I was watching? Something called Hinterland. Who? And I think it's a... Hinterland? It's a oh. cop drama from... I think it's from the UK, from Wales. And... Uh, <laughs> Wales has got a cop drama. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> oh, fucking boy, oh, somebody's died in the valleys. <laughs> yep, that was Wales, by the way. <laughs> is is that like your West Virginia of the UK? That's Wales by, by way of South India. That 
Well, I'm not allowed to do accents like that. Sorry, we're not allowed to do that in this day and age. So. <laughs> I actually, uh, live, I, I live less than an hour from Wales. Okay, but uh, God, what was I going to say? I don't know. Uh, uh, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure we forget that. <laughs> oh God. Welsh Welsh cop show. Yeah, I know. And I was I was going somewhere with it. And, oh, yeah, I was amazed. They were they were going to have this big confrontation with the you know one of the suspects, and it was going to be a big deal. And somebody says, "Get the anti knife jacket out." And I'm like, "Huh?" So currently, jacket. you have you have black jackets, and they call them anti knife jackets. I was like, "Oh, interesting." interesting. It's because it's because unlike the Americans, we don't deploy everybody with every weapon they'll ever need every time they step out the front door. So when seriously, <laughs> yeah, it's true. So <laughs> when they do use stuff like that, especially in a TV show, you have to give it its proper catalog name, otherwise people might not know what you mean. Gotcha, gotcha. No, here it's cops, it's rednecks. Everybody shows up in rifles and black jackets, you know. Well, like Halloween Four. Yes, just like Halloween Four. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> just like Halloween Four, although the rednecks would have been, you know. They would have had more gear on than what they're carrying. Welsh rednecks. Doesn't bear thinking about, really. <laughs> it's so funny. That show is, it's, well, it's filmed on the coast, apparently. But every single house looks like it's falling down. I mean, yeah, that's know, Wales. Just... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I won't say too much more because uh, our good friend Gore Blimey lives in Wales. I was going to say, doesn't it, does it Gore live in Wales? Yeah. Yeah. Probably a few others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like Wales. <laughs> I, disclaimer, I do like. I like South Wales anyway. Fair bother with North Wales because I ain't stupid. But yeah, I do like South Wales. What they show on the TV show is pretty is pretty gorgeous. So, is it, was it raining in when you watched it? No, oh, no, it I normally rain. They might have CGI'd that out. I might. Uh, I, I did like three, four episodes, not a, not a rainy episode among them. Bloody hell! They couldn't <laughs> have been filmed in Wales then. <laughs> oh dear! Right, well, so that's lost our Welsh listenership. Yep. Both of them. We apologize to, to all the Welsh folks out there. Sorry. Yeah, sorry you live in Wales. Never mind. <laughs> oh, goodness. Says me, who lives in the arsehole of the country. Fucking West Midlands. Jesus. Yeah, anyway. I'm not a native, so I can criticize it. There you go. There you go. Can I say native? Am I allowed to say native? Y- you are. You are. Okay. Well, well it's too late, because I already have. But... <laughs> yep. Yep. You're allowed to say it. Okay. <laughs> just don't make any other derogatory slangs no I'll, I'll have to watch myself now it's all right. done in jest I don't mean any of it apart from the Welsh thing <laughs> and, and the, the West Midlands and thing. the Midlands thing <laughs> <laughs> the Indian thing that was just a joke anyway <laughs> <coughs> right then cough it up could be a nice right yep. All right. Uh, uh, have you bought anything you want to talk about no I've not what about you uh, no, I haven't either, actually. I've been pretty good. I'm waiting for my 4K box set of Flash Gordon to arrive in a couple of weeks. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. I've been watching your uh, 4K viewership on Twitter, so... Oh, I love a bit of 4K. Oh, what did I yeah. watch in 4K the other day? Oh, I can't say too much, because it's a review. I haven't published it yet. But I did watch um, Pitch Black, you know, the Vin Diesel film? Yeah, sure, sure. The trilogy, or part of the trilogy. Yeah, well, the first one. It's um, getting a 4K release from Arrow in a couple of weeks' time. Oh, nice. So I did watch that on 4K the other day. And uh, not a film that I'm particularly engrossed by. It's all right. But um, if you are after some pretty good visuals, it stands up very well. I, I liked I liked the first movie was good. They yeah, that is just the stopped. One. Yeah, they could have just stopped at the first. Yeah. But I enjoyed Pitch Black, but the other two are all right. Yeah, I can't remember them. I did. I reviewed... The third one, when it came out, but I can't remember the second one. I think they're doing a fourth one, aren't they? Why? Well, I don't know. Give Vin okay. Diesel some work, I suppose. He's that hard up? I don't know. He's got the Fast and Furious stuff, isn't he? Right, right. He can ride that coattail for the next hundred years. Have you ever watched any of them? The first one. Yeah, I've seen the first one. I may have seen the second one, I can't remember, but after that, I haven't bothered. Yeah, yeah, the, the first one was, I don't know, at best it was, it was just an average action flick, nothing more. Yeah. Have they gone to space yet? No, not yet. Oh. Or Vegas. They've not, have they gone to Vegas? Must have done. I know there's a Tokyo one, isn't there? They've been Tokyo one, right? Yeah. I don't know. But, I mean, there's a lot of people who love them, and, you know. But they just, yeah, it just it's not my thing. I think my son's got the box set, actually. I may have to uh, delve into that, just to say I've seen them. Ah. Uh, did we talk about, I can't remember my memory's so crappy, 
um, did we talk about the last uh, Rambo movie? Rambo? Yeah. No, but ha- yeah. hang on, hang off on that one. Okay. Because I think we may do a big thing on that. Okay. It's on the list. I know it's not horror, but fuck it. My podcast. I'll do what I want. All right. Never mind, Chris. Never mind. Yes, we'll forget that. So, no, we had bought nothing. So, let's do some good, some bad, and some ugly. Okay. Right then, give us something good. What do you watch that's good? I uh, watched a movie called Parasite. Okay. H- have you seen this one? I have not, but I am aware of it. Okay. I would highly suggest it for you. I think you will enjoy it. I was shocked at how much I liked it. I, I didn't think I would like it. I haven't read you know, kind of what it was about, but it, it was really, really well done. Um, it is done by, what is it, uh, Bong Joon-ho? Right. Yeah. And he did uh, Snowpiercer, which was eh, I, it. Did, it didn't trip my trigger. I didn't like Snowpiercer. I must admit, I like the idea of it. I just didn't like the film. Right. Right. Mother and my favorite um, Bong Joon Ho is the host. I, I love that stupid monster movie. It's funny. It's quirky. It's oh awesome. yeah, yeah, yeah. The thing is, the host. The first half hour is brilliant, and the last half hour is brilliant. It's the hour in the middle is a bit drags a bit, doesn't it? Yeah, but you know, yeah, it can. But I, yeah. I, I I recommend Parasite. I kind of see why it won an Academy Award. It's a little less horror and a lot more thriller. Yeah. But it's it's really quirky. It's really interesting. It it's well worth the watch for sure. It, it's absolutely a, it's a great movie. Yeah, I will catch up to it. That's the sort of film I'll probably. Uh, the missus has got Amazon Prime, so I'll probably catch it on there at some point. Yeah, yeah, I caught it on Hulu. So yeah, for yeah. sure. Sure. Excellent. Okay, Parasite. Okay. My good is, I don't know whether you've seen this, The Invisible Man. No, I have not. The 2020 film directed by Lee Whannell. Now, I've heard super mixed reviews on this one. Have you? Yes, but you apparently liked it. I do. I mean, I'm a fan of the original, the 1933 film, I think it is, with Claude Rains. Yep. And I've always, I've always liked The Invisible Man as a story. I know they did some silly sequels and whatever. Um, and I love Universal Monsters and blah, blah, blah. We had that reboot of The Mummy a couple of years back with Tom Cruise, which was, I didn't hate it, but yeah, it didn't go anywhere, did it? So. It, it's, yeah, it, it, it really didn't. But so uh, yeah, when they announced Lee Whannell was going to do The Invisible Man, I thought, well, that's interesting because I liked, um, uh, what's the film he did with Logan Marshall Green? Upgrade, which I really liked. Oh, i got to add that one to my list, too. Have you not seen that? No. Oh, you'll like that. Okay. That's very much up your uh, up your straza. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I liked Upgrade. So, um, yeah, Lee Whannell, Invisible Man, good combination for me. It is more of a thriller than a horror. Okay. Um, okay. It's probably closer to, have you seen Hollow Man? Yes. The Kevin Bacon one. It's closer to that in tone than it is to the original Invisible Man. But it has got a... a a sort of mean streak running through it. Okay, okay. The way they do it, it's very clever. It's, it's uh, how can I put it? It's seen more from the victim's point of view than it is from the invisible man's point of view. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. So, uh, yeah, it's just very good, a very good, well done thriller. Maybe runs a little long, I think. Maybe they, it runs out of steam probably just about the right time. It couldn't have gone on any longer. Yeah, I, uh, well, I'm a big fan of Lee Whannell, so... Yeah, well, you'll like this. You'll say, watch Upgrade and then watch this, and then you'll, you'll get to see a nice little sort of through line of his style, if you like. Nice, nice. Now, we're gonna, t- we're gonna take, we're gonna step back a few years, and talk about John Carpenter, 1992. Have you ever seen Memoirs of the Invisible Man? Yes. I love that movie. Do you? Yes, I do. Right. Uh, now, I have not seen it in probably 15 years, if not <laughs> long. So I don't know how it would hold up. But I actually read the book before I saw the movie, and I loved the book. I loved the book. Okay. But I enjoyed the movie because it's kind of the Chevy Chase. He kind of acts it like he did in the in the Fletch style of just being super goofy, but, you know, yeah, get, it's, taking care of business, you know. Yeah, it got a Blu-ray release here a couple of years ago from uh, Fabulous Films. What did you think about it? I, to be honest, I can't remember that much. Well, I, gave it, I think I gave it either a two or three out of five. Yeah, not one I'm going to return to very quickly. But then I, okay. I didn't see it when it came out, so I'm, I'm looking at okay. it with sort of 21st okay. century eyes. But um, I, it's one of those films, I can see what John Carpenter was doing with it. 
Yeah. And I think there was some stories of clashing on the set between him and Chevy Chase and whatever. So, yeah, I think a lot of that comes across. But, um, yeah. Yeah. And from what I remember, it's pretty, pretty truthful to the source material. So. Yeah. But, uh, I'll, I'll may give it another go at some point. But, um, yeah. yeah not top, top yeah. draw John Carpenter, is it? Uh, well, no. It, it's still a joke. Okay. Right then. Give us a bad film then. Uh, first off, I, I apologize. I, I hate bashing movies. Oh, I don't. I love it. <laughs> Not me. I hate it. I feel uncomfortable doing it. But there was one called Wounds. Good boss. Um Wounds. And it was here. It was on um, Hulu. Mm-hmm. And I really, it's a, based on a short story, pretty recent short story, I think last year, the year before, by a gentleman by the name of Nathan Ballagrunt. And I really enjoyed his short story. I really enjoyed the short stories in his collection. But that movie, it just, it did absolutely not the movie. It, it, I, it took me four tries to finish it. It was, Who did? I just and you say it's a not, short story, short film. Well, it's not a short film. It's based on a short story. Oh, I see. Yeah. 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 Um, and it was directed by, um, Bobek Anavar, Anavir. I, sorry sir for butchering your name but he did a um like a little horror flick about uh the during in a right iranian uprising called under the shadows have you ever seen that one uh no but the name rings a bell yeah it was i quite enjoyed that one but man this this wounds i just it, it just and i remember the short story it seemed like all the characters were super despicable hmm. as well and so, you know, that, that always, but you know, when the characters are unlikable for me, it's like, oh gosh, it, it just, it did nothing for me at all. I, I, I know a number of folks have really enjoyed it. I just, it just didn't click with me. Oh, not good for wounds then. Yeah. Yeah. Oh dear. But, uh, but definitely check out Under the Shadows if you haven't done that. Uh, from what I remember, that was a good movie. Yeah. I, I may have, I may have that somewhere. It definitely rings a bell, Under the Shadows. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I'll have a look for that. Cool. Okay. Uh, my bad is a 2019 film called Echoes of Fear. Echoes of Fear. Yeah. I was actually sent this for review and I didn't review it because I watched it and I thought it wouldn't be fair of me just to write a 500 word bit on why this film was crap. So, uh, funnily enough, I was actually speaking to a, a fellow a colleague of mine earlier on who did review it for Fright Fest and he really enjoyed it. He gave it three stars, but um, I gave it one star. Um, it sort of um, plays off. It's a haunted house story, basically. It plays okay. off Amityville to a point and a few other things. What's that one you like? The um, oh, what's the guy's name? Uh, blah, 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 blah. The guy who wrote Doctor Strange, C. William Cargill. Doctor. Dr. Yeah, he did. A, he did a film with Scott Derrickson. What's it called? I don't. I don't know. Yeah, you do. Got Ethan Hawke in it. Oh, Sinister. No, that's Sinister. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, I didn't like that either. But um, wait, hold on, hold on. Back, back the trade up. What? You didn't like Sinister? No. How could you not like that movie? It bought the tits off me. Really? Yeah. I didn't like the second one either. Okay, uh, I get the second one. The second one was average. Uh, to be honest, first? I think I think I prefer the second one to the first one. Okay, so I think why I liked it so much is it was one of those where I, I, I was going to go see a movie. Okay, mm. great. I went by myself, completely dark theater. Like, there was two people in the theater other than me. And you could hear every bump in the night, all the background effects. It was dark, and it was scary, and it was really good. Well, it's funny you should say that because I was talking to the chap, Paul Watts, his name is, he writes for Fright Fest. I was chatting with him on Twitter about Echoes of Fear and I, I didn't like it. And uh, he said he wa had to watch it on his laptop because he couldn't get it to stream to his TV. So he said he was watching it on the laptop with the headphones on sort of close up and it was really effective. And I said, well, that's funny because I did, I streamed it onto my TV, my 50 inch TV, and I thought it was absolute garbage. So maybe, maybe watching it in a more intimate environment is probably more helpful. It's, it's really funny because, um, I showed it to my middle son, Eric, uh, Sinister, and yeah. it was, I, I, I did it at night. All the lights were off. I turned the volume a little bit higher than normal hmm. and he got, he got creeped out. So I think, I think there's something to be said for, you the know, setting, the setting, how of, you watch it. Yeah, that's that yeah. could be true. 
Because I've been, I've watched movies on my iPad with headphones on at night alone and gotten, you know, a good jump scare out of it. Hmm. Okay. So that in mind, I think you'd like it goes of fear. <laughs> yeah. Woman moves into a house that's left to her in somebody's will and then creepy things start happening. Um, well, they start happening eventually <laughs> when you have to sit through an hour of wandering around rooms and this, that and the other. Um, yeah. To me, it reminded me a bit of Sinister, a bit of Amityville, but without the budget or the skill behind it. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. You know, I mean, I'm not going to knock all these indie films that are coming out, because obviously they've made films I haven't, so who am I to say? Right. But a lot of the... Probably why I didn't like Sinister at the time, actually. There seems to be a lot of films in this same style coming through, and just being slow with nothing happening is not stylish it's not artistic it says to me you haven't got enough material to fill your running time and that's basically what i got there's a case to be made for that for sure yeah and that's what i got and i seem to be getting a lot of films like that coming through at the moment and yeah so maybe uh i had a little bit of prejudice against it to start with i suppose but yeah not a film i enjoyed um others will get more out of it than i did right 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 interesting Yes. Okie dokie. Give us your ugly then. Um, now my ugly is one that I think, from what I understand, a lot of people really enjoyed. It's, uh, 2019 directed by Alexandria, Alexander Aja? Am yeah. I saying that right? Yeah. Aja. It's called, it's called Crawl. Okay. I have seen that. Now, why is it ugly? Because the movie went on for way too long. Yeah. Crocodiles don't act like that. At yep. all. That's not how they kill people. Yep. It went on way too long. And it went on way too long. And it went on way too long. <laughs> yeah. And it just, it went from a kind of a cool, interesting concept movie where you're thinking, okay, where they like literally get out of the house and then they have to go fight more crocodiles. And I'm like, boy, they, I could have put up with everything had they made the movie shorter and made the interactions with the crocodiles less. But, you know, I am literally watching the Indiana Jones of, croc- of people swimming with crocodiles. <laughs> yeah, and, and it uh, it just went on way too long with that with that. And I I like the guy. I'm a huge fan of High Tension. I yeah. like the Hills Have Eyes remake. I like Piranha 3D. It was a fun movie. Yeah, I loved High Tension. Um, this one was just for me. It fell super flat because it just went on way too long. It's like. So what you're saying is it went on for too long? Yes. Okay. Yes. And crocodiles don't act like that. They don't kill like that. And I could even have set that aside had it been constructed in a way where the backstory took up more of the the, the, the part of the movie and the crocodiles were less. Or I, I don't know. Come up with something. But yeah. Yeah, no. I think they basically said, hey, I've got an idea. Let's have a woman trapped in a basement and a crocodile. Right. And right. they didn't. The first pass of the script that was made, that was what they filmed. Yes, yes. That's what exactly. it said to me, yeah. Because I, yeah. I love crocodile films. Rogue and all, Alligator and all that sort of stuff. I love all that. I think they're great. And to make a film like that, that's, yeah, like you say, it goes on too long. Yeah, there's a big Indiana Jones adventure type vibe to a lot of what happens in it. And you think, no, it just doesn't fit. Right. But there's some nice photography in it. I like the old aerial shots of the floods with the crocodiles in them and all that sort of stuff. There was a lot of good camera work, for mm. sure. Yeah. It, absolutely, absolutely. And I love The Hills Have Eyes and all that sort of stuff. I think he's a good filmmaker, but yeah, he, he is. I liken him to Megadeth, you know, Alexander Aja. He does yes. something that's really good, and you think, yeah, and then the next one comes out, and you think, ah, this isn't quite as good as it. He's got a bit more mainstream. And then the next one comes out, and you go, oh, this is shit. And then he starts <laughs> again with another good one. You go, yeah, this is really good. <laughs> Oh, you look at I Megadeth's know. career. I, I know, but you know what? Those guys get a lifetime pass for me <laughs> because they wrote the song Holy Wars Punisher do. I, I don't they can they can write the crappiest country songs from now till Sunday and I'm still gonna love them because they did <laughs> Holy Wars. They I get know, a lifetime pass. But they release an album like Endgame and you think, Fuck yeah, brilliant thrash metal then they bring out yep. thirteen and you go, Well, this is a bit <laughs> got a bit more melody in it, but okay and then they bring out Super Clyde and you know, oh, fuck off. <laughs> I know, right? I know. And then they have to come I... back with something thrashier again. I know. I know. It's a three album cycle, they just do it repeatedly. <laughs> <laughs> You're not gonna be Metallica. Which is a good thing. No, and I actually, I prefer Megadeth than Metallica, but yeah, yeah you're, you're me not going to get that success. So. 
Don't even right. go for it. Stick at what you're good at. Right. For, for whatever reason, Metallica is one of those bands where they could put out shit on a shingle and they have many times. Yeah. Uh, and people love them. It's great. They got, you know, awesome. Yeah. But Dave Mustaine, what a guitar player. Yes, 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 yes. He's a uh, he's great songwriter, great guitar player, for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. And I'm sure he'd do a podcast with dodgy Welsh accents if he could. <laughs> well, Dave's welcome any time on our podcast. I'd love to have Dave Mustaine on our <laughs> horror film podcast. I don't know why, but he might come on. <laughs> the invitation's good. there. <laughs> right, Dave. <laughs> have your people call my people. Well, yeah. my people is me. Especially, after I've, out, especially after I've just slagged off your album release cycle process. <laughs> but I'm sure he's going to come on and talk to us about that. But remember, Myra gave you a lifetime pass. Yeah. Oh, well. Rust in Peace and Countdown to Extinction are two of my favorite albums. So, yeah, it'll, oh, always, get, it'll always get a pass for me. They're absolute classics. They're like uh, 2112, Number of the Beast. I mean, they're just oh, oh, yeah. classic. Yes, yes. Anyway, that's the Megadeth podcast over with. My, <laughs> my Ugly is a reference back to last time. I said I was going to rewatch it and let you know. And it is Cabin in the Woods. What? Oh, Chris. No. <laughs> Now, Whoa. I'm putting it in the ugly section because I promised you I'd rewatch it and it would fit into yep. one of them. Now, yes. I didn't want to put it in good because I didn't like it that much. But okay. I, didn't, I didn't put it in bad because I didn't hate it. So <laughs> it's going in ugly because I've got nowhere else to put it. <laughs> the problems I've got with it were still there. I still think it's a little bit contrived is the word, I suppose. I don't know. Oh, but, yeah. Yeah. But I did enjoy... Bradley Whitford and Richard Jenkins. I'd happily see a film with them two fucking around in it. <laughs> Again, they were great. I don't know. They're awesome. In fact, uh, take, those two guys. <laughs> yeah, take the teenagers out of it and all the other shit. Just have them two. And I really I enjoyed it. <laughs> I know. I know. I, I don't know how I feel about Sigourney Weaver coming into it at the end. I know why she's there. But it just seems a little bit... They tried to swing for the fences on that one and whiffed it yeah it didn't quite hit so um yeah, yeah it's in my ugly i if people love it i know a lot of people love it great if you don't love it that's great too i'm very much in the middle of it i did in, i liked it a little more than my previous viewings so, so i paid more attention to jenkins and whitford they were very very good <laughs> yeah and uh, you gotta love the stoner who just says screw it the world's going down i'm having a joy yeah, yeah, do we yeah. say do we say do we say joint anymore? I don't know what we're saying anymore. Oh, I, I don't know what we're allowed to say, but um, uh, we're being cut off. We're not allowed to say anything. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, um, Cabin in the Woods. It's in my ugly. There you go. I've rewatched it. I probably won't need to rewatch it again for a very long time. <laughs> oh, oh well, that's that over with. Right then. So what have we done? We've done good, bad, ugly. We've done the Megadeth podcast, the politics podcast. Should we? Can we wonder what we're supposed to be talking about? Sure, we could do that. Let's do that. It's Final Destination. Ooh. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, I'm going to play a trailer. I got this feeling. It's a weird feeling. The cabin starts to shake, right? And, and the, the left side blows up, and then the whole plane just explodes. Explode! It's not a joke! It's not a joke! We get thrown off the plane all because Browning has a bad dream? I saw it. The plane! It's gonna blow up! It's gonna blow up! All 287 passengers are feared dead. Because of you, I'm still alive. There are no accidents. No coincidences. And no escapes. Did it happen again? Did you see Todd die? What if it was our time? What if we were not meant to get on that plane? What if there is a design that it's not finished? By walking off the plane, you're cheating death. You have to figure out when it's coming back at you. What do you got now? He knows which one of us is next. You have a responsibility to tell me. I knew I should have hit on Tammy in the pool that time. I'm not gonna let it happen, okay? 
Nobody has control over life and death. Unless they are taking lives. And causing death. Now can you promise me that no one else is going to die? Right then, Final Destination from 2000. Woohoo! Directed yeah. by James Wong, starring Devon Sawyer, Ali Lata, Kerr Smith, Daniel Roebuck, Sean William Scott, Tony Todd, Lisa Marie Carrick, and Barbara Tyson. The plot, according to IMDb, is after a teenager has a terrifying vision of him and his friends dying in a plane crash, he prevents the accident only to have death hunt them down one by one. Ooh. I know, right? Yeah. So, yeah, this was um, this was a vote, wasn't it? This one, this franchise. It was. It was a vote. This was your choice. It was. It was one that I put up. Yes. Yes. yes it was. Yes. And everyone sided with you, which is unusual. And I know <laughs> it, it is highly unusual. It's never highly happened unusual. before. I know. Yeah. I mean, this was a franchise <laughs> I was intending to get to at some point, but I didn't think it was strong enough as a franchise to cover. While we're still sort of doing the big boys, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Heck, heck it's not a strong enough franchise to cover five movies, much less the big boys. Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but the people spoke, and I rewatched them all, and you rewatched them all, and here we I are. Did. So, did you see this when it came out? No. I saw it when it was released onto um, VHS or DVD, whatever it was at the time. Yeah. No, I didn't see it in cinemas either. I remember this. Uh, uh, a colleague I was working with at the time told me about this. Oh, have you seen this film, Final Destination? No, no, no. He told me the plot. Oh, that sounds really good. Yeah, yeah. And then um, I think I rented it on VHS. Okay, okay. And I loved it. I thought it was good. Cause it's basically a slasher film without the slasher, isn't it? It uh, Well, death is the slasher. Which I suppose is a good idea if you think about something my son said to me, actually, well, after we watched Load of the Friday the 13th. He said, can't we just have a compilation of all the kills? Right. And I thought, well, that's pretty much what Final Destination is. It, yes, absolutely. Okay, so people get on a plane, Kitty has a vision of the plane crashing, they start a fight, they get off the plane, the plane crashes, and oh dear, death is after us. Right, right. And then it's kill, 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 everyone's dead. Spoiler, job done. Yes, that is correct. That is correct. <laughs> See, I, I'm sensing that <laughs> there's not much of a conversation to be had about this, Phil. You know, it, it, it's it, the kills are inventive. You know, yes. you, you like you like Tony Todd as the the super creepy uh, mortuary dude who somehow has depth design. Well, he's the out. exposition guy, isn't he? He tells you what's happening. Yes. Now, the funniest part about this whole movie, and it's still every time I see it, it just cracks me up. Why is Tony Todd preparing a body for a funeral in an Armani suit? Because he's Tony Todd. Okay. All right. All right, that's cleared up that mystery. So uh, I'm just 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 throwing out that out there. Just, just throwing that out there. The first movie was good. Okay, yes. I liked this whole Rube Rube Goldberg. You know the crazy designs of all the kills and the, the deaths and everything. It was super inventive when it came out. I really liked it. Yeah. It really to me doesn't hold up that well. And you start really? to realize, yeah. And when you start to realize. It's kind of the same movie five different times. Ah, so, okay. As a franchise, you're saying it doesn't hold up very well. Right. Now, this movie's, there's a couple standouts in the franchise, for sure. And the yes. first one, because it was first, it was really good, really super interesting. The mythology was, was, was right on, and I enjoyed the first the first one. Rewa even rewatching it, I enjoyed it. Yeah. See, it comes from that period, and I had a bit of this when I was reviewing Pitch back the other day. Around the 2000, 2000, 2001 is a very strange period because we were trying to move out, or we, the films were trying to move out of the 90s, but still without any, any destination, if you like, it, to know where it's going. And so you had these, you had, oh, hey, you have these weird CGI effects where look what we can do with a computer, but it's, right. not, but the textures and that aren't quite there. So it doesn't feel like there's anything tangible happening. And, 
I think Final Destination just about gets away with it, looking at it now. It kind of does. I, I absolutely, I, I, you know, as we get in the later movies, I'll, I'll share a few things, but the first one kind of, it does get away with it, I think. My biggest problem with the first film, or well, I've got two problems with it, really. The first one is the acting. Well, I think the acting's at best passable. Yeah, it's it's not the um, the lead kitty whose name is the character name is Alex. The actor is Devon Sawyer. I and this sort of leads into my second point. He's taking it very seriously, and I think the problem we've got it looking at it now is tonally the film doesn't quite know what it wants to be. Right. It doesn't know whether it wants to be a serious, you know, death is coming, we must prepare ourselves, or isn't this funny? You remember Friday the 13th where the teenagers die? Haha, <laughs> we're going to do that, but without Jason. Right, right, for sure. And I think by the end, I think the second film suffers with it a little bit too, but by the end of the second film, they know where they're going, and it leads into the third film with a certain tone, and they sort of found their feet. And I think this first one... It's just, it plays it a little bit too serious at points where it shouldn't do. Yes, it does try to take it, take itself way too seriously. Yeah, where you should be sort of laughing along with the sudden jump scares, it doesn't, it feels like it just wants you to go jump up and go, Wah! rather than right. laugh at it. Right, right. Like when, the, I mean, probably the best kill in the whole thing is the most famous one where um, she steps off the curb and the bus drives into her. Right, right. I mean, right. buses don't go that fucking fast. Now, come on, let's be honest. Yeah, I, I, was, I was sad to see Stifler get decapitated, but it happens. Again, why is he in this film? I, I don't know. He's, he's, who's the guy in Scream, the one who played Shaggy? Matthew Lillard. I always, yeah. I always lump him and Sean William Scott together. They're sort of the comic relief from films around that time. Right. But every time you look at it, he's Stifler. You said it, you called him Stifler. That's what right. he is. Yes. And I guess he's in, he's in it to try and sell the film a little bit because people know who he is. But again, his over comical tone mixing with Devon Sawyer's seriousness, you think, which one am yeah. I supposed to be following here? Right, right, right. Ali Larter's in it, who was in a, quite a few horror films at the time. I quite like her as a sort of uh, a final girl type character. But she plays it way too seriously in both movies. She's in the second one. Yes, she is in the second one. Again, she plays it way too seriously. So I, I think as much as I like the idea of Final Destination and I like the way it plays out, I like the kills, I just... Right. Yeah, there's something that stops me loving it. And I think it's just that tone and the, the performances. Yeah, yeah, it's... It, I, I mean, I gave it a 3 out of 5. Did you now? I mean, I'm mean, 3.5 out of 5, yeah, yep. Okay, hang on, I'm just scrolling back along my... Uh, oh, I gave it 4. Really? Okay. Four boom boxes in the face out of five. Yeah, I didn't. Th yeah, I didn't think three and a half was quite enough because I, when I was watching it, I enjoyed it. Okay. I say when I sat back and thought about it, I was like, three and a half doesn't feel enough. Four may be a little bit too much, but overall, I enjoyed it, and I think the enjoyment factor won out over the nitpicks. Gotcha. Gotcha. But um, that may be corrected. In the next film. So you gave it three and a half. Interesting. I suppose yep. in a series like this, we have to mention what our uh, favorite kills are. Oh, you know, I should have, I should have starred these because I actually wrote down the kills and some of them I wasn't uh, very descriptive on. Okay. I, I think, I think the one I liked the best was the teacher because it was the most complicated. Valerie Luton. Did you spot the reference? No. What reference did I miss? Well, she's called Valerie Luton. Yep. And who's the director of Cat People? Val Luton. Oh, no, completely. There you go. Missed miss that one. Yeah, there's quite a few little um, references peppered throughout, which you have to pay attention to. Right. That being one of them. But yeah, the trouble is, um, I think with a lot of these, the more complicated deaths, while they're good fun to watch, it's like watching somebody have a game of mousetrap, isn't it? It's... um. Yes, that I call him Ruby Goldberg, but yes, it's yeah, like yeah. a game of Bus Trap. Yeah. I just think that the trouble is, I prefer the deaths where it looks like an accident, like the girl stepping out in front of the bus, rather than the one where, well, if the devil or whoever it's supposed to be, if death does this and puts this water on the floor here or puts this thing here, it, it, <coughs> do you know what I mean? 
Yes, I know exactly what you mean. I mean, obviously, when the if you look at it in the world of the film, when the police arrive, they can look at it and say, oh, well, it's an accident. She slipped on some water or whatever. Right, right. But yeah, it just felt a little bit... Whilst I enjoy watching it, I, I'd rather that they were more accidental. A bit like when you watch Night on Elm Street and you want a death that makes it look like in the real world it was an accident. Sure, sure. Do you gotcha, know what I mean? Gotcha. I know exactly what you're saying. I know exactly what you're saying. They, they, it's, it, I think you pointed it out as they, they tried too hard to kind of imply that or set it. And that's kind of what they do with their, their whole setup is they're, you know, they're trying way too hard. Yeah. And I think that may come into the fact they didn't know if it was going to be a hit or they didn't know if it would get a sequel. So they just throw everything in and see what happens. Right, right. But, um, yeah, I do enjoy it as a bit of, bit of sort of 2000s entertainment. I think it's aged quite well, relatively yeah, speaking. Yeah, yeah. That's not what else I can say about it, really. Yep, exactly. Cool. Shall we move on to the second one? Yes. Let's play a trailer for Final Destination 2. Is that guy drinking beer? Final Destination 2 from 2003, directed by David R. Ellis, starring Ali Lata, A.J. Cook, James Kirk, Tony Todd, Jonathan Cherry, Justina Machado and Sarah Carter. And the synopsis is, when Kimberly has a violent premonition of a highway pileup, she blocks the freeway, keeping a few others meant to die safe. Or are they? The survivors mysteriously start dying and it's up to Kimberly to stop it before she is next. So pretty much like the first one, really. Right, right. But yep. I think this one's better. This one is better. Yes, I love this highway pilot. It, it's the highway scene is awesome. Yeah. I, I, yes, yes, it is much, much better. It is still on every level. The signs are all there. There's the little kid smashing the toy trucks together. There's ACDC Highway to Hell on the stereo. Oh, oh God, yes. All They're the little all... touches are there and, you know, nothing's by accident. It's all meant to imply what's going to happen. You know what's going to happen. But the way they set it up is brilliant. I love the uh, the truck with the timber on it shooting the yeah. long street police car. Yeah. It's so yeah. well done. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I absolutely love it. And that the... the... The truck with the timber on it, I think, is the most iconic scene. That's what everybody remembers. That's the bit. As soon as you say Final Destination 2, that's the bit I think of. Yep, yep. It, absolutely brilliant. After that, it goes into the standard Final Destination things of the teenagers have to work out what's happening, who's going to die in what order. They go see Tony Todd and this, that, and the other. Yep, yep. It pretty much plays out the same as the first one. Ali Lata returns with her character of Clear Rivers, which is a stupid fucking name. It is a dumb name. It yeah. is a dumb name. I think they called her that just so in the later film they can... Isn't the hospital called the Clear Rivers Institute or something like that? I believe you're right, yeah. Yeah, that's the only reason it's there. <laughs> I'm sure it is. Stupid name. But, um, yeah, to be honest, again, I like Ali Lata. I like her acting in this and everything. She's the serious tone to everyone else's running... Running around screaming like headless chickens with a violent death. Right. And again, right. it's it's that little bit that brings it slightly down to me. Yeah, I love Final Destination too. I I, I did too. It's better actors. The kills are better. I love the 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 kid the dentist chair. That poor kid, you know, gets out and gets squashed by a uh, 
glass. Yeah. Again, you can see it all happening, but the way yep. it's played out, it's slicker than the first film. I think that's the word. Yep. It's slicker. Yeah. So, what, what's up with the the closing song? What was the closing song? I don't know. Something about my name is Death. Come taste something. It sounds like peppermint, but I, certainly nobody could have put peppermint in there. <laughs> I can't remember, to be honest. You know, um, it was God. It was so terrible. I mean, it was terrible. But Final Destination Two. Is that the one with the barbecue at the end? Yes. Again, it's been a few weeks since I've watched this, so I'm getting a little bit muddled up between two and three and whatever. Yeah, the tone of the second one, it's pretty much the same as the first one most of the way through, but they seem to have a better handle on what they're doing. But the last sort of five minutes, it goes into overdrive. It it does go into overdrive, I, I admit. They suddenly, it's like they go, fuck it, let's go out on a big fucking high. Right. And they do, and you just, I just, there's that bit where you think, why couldn't the rest of the film have this same silly tone to it? Right. The high energy silly tone, because it, it does, it, it's, it still hasn't figured out, though, even though I love this one the most out of all of them. Yes. Um, it still hasn't figured out what it wanted to be yet. And I'm not sure it ever does, to be honest. No, because I think they pull back a bit as the series yep. goes on, but we'll get yep. there in a minute. I'm just going to pull up this list of deaths, because <laughs> <laughs> the list of death. So for those of you who don't know, Chris found a list of deaths on a fandom wiki page. I found another page now. <laughs> list of deaths dot fandom dot com. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Final Destination 2. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, the character at the end when the barbecue explodes. I really love that kill because you don't expect it. Like, right. You obviously it's do now if you haven't seen the film and you're listening to us. But yeah, there's loads of good kills in this one. There's falling. The guy in the apartment when he's he's climbing out the kitchen window. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, the glass comes down and the ladder comes down, all that sort of stuff. Yep. I love it. Yep. I love all that. Yeah, it was done much better. Yeah, there's uh, an yeah. elevator kill as well. Somebody gets decapitated by an elevator. She gets stuck in the there door. Is. Yes, yes. Oh, brilliant, yeah. And there's the uh, oh, the airbag. The flying fence, yes. She's stuck in the car and the airbag goes off and the metal goes through her head. <laughs> yes, yeah. And, and I think in this one, the cinematography was much better. It was much better shot than the... Than one. Yeah, and the editing, what I like about this one is when there is a kill, the editing doesn't linger. It's like when the uh, the, the bit of metal impales her through the skull. It's a, it goes through the skull, you see her dead body, that's it, cut to the next scene. Right, right. And then you see the aftermath a bit later on. I love all that. Yeah. It's so well edited. Um, yeah, I just wish they had the balls to say, fuck it, let's just be silly with it, which they didn't quite do. But apart from that, I love Final Destination 2. I think it holds up just as well as the first one. Yeah, I uh, I actually gave this one a four. Did you really? I yes. gave it 4.5. Okay, so you're running about a half point. Okay, all right. Yeah, 4.5 exploding barbecues out of five. Yeah, I really enjoy Fond Destination too. Yes, me too. I, absol- I agree, absolutely. All right, my enjoyment may change now, though, because we're going to do Final Destination 3. Yep. Let's play the trailer. Coaster. We're still going to die. Unless we can figure out how to stop it. I never thought I could see my old dad before it happened. Right then, Final Destination 3 from 2006, directed by James Wong once again, starring Mary Elizabeth Winstead, Ryan Merriman, Sam Easton, Jesse Moss, Gina Holden, Texas Battle, remember the Alamo, Maggie Ma, (laughs) Patrick Gallagher, and featuring a little voice from Tony Todd, he's not actually in the film, but his voice is, 
And the synopsis is a student's premonition of a deadly roller coaster ride saves her life and a lucky few, but not from death itself, which seeks out those who escaped their fate. Yep. Woo! Right then. So, something like that. Something like that. Okay, for a very long time, this was my least favourite one. Now, I, I want to... Uh, interesting. Now, I wanna make, can I make a couple of comments before we launch into it about this? You can. I like the opening sequence is my second favourite opening sequence behind the highway one. I think okay. the roller coaster scene is very, very good. I really liked it. Yeah. And... The kill that I always remember in all of these movies that comes to forefront when I think of Final Destination after the logs on the highway is the tanning bed. Yes. That's the high points of the movie. <laughs> That's <Okay>. it. <laughs> Go ahead, Chris. I mean, it's just, I, it, it, it just. I'm sort of in agreement with you. For a long time, it, this was my least favorite. It's certainly my least favorite out of the first three. And even after the fourth one came out, this was still my least favorite. Although well, that may have changed. Watching it this time, I liked it probably a little more than I did in 2006, but I still think this has got some problems. Um, the opening scene with the roller coaster, good idea. I think the pacing's off. They take too long to get to where they need to be. Yeah. It's not like the um, the highway one where it pretty much throws you straight in. Right. It tell you, it just takes a little bit too long. Um, but it, it was once it it happens and the, you know, the bolts come out and the thing flies off. It's, it's so well set up. It's well made. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. The pacing was off to me. You got the tanning bed death, which yeah, again, you can see it coming a mile off, but of course, but yeah, it was quite fun. Of to course. Watch that. It's, it is the, the singular, uh, I mean, the only reason the tanning bed is in there is to allow them to show boobs, which I think is, um, very perfectly acceptable. There's nothing wrong with that. Agreed. I'd rather they were more natural, to be honest, but um, I can't have everything. <laughs> it's just... And they had your favorite, they had your favorite uh, thing here. You, you, I know what you're about to say. They had the rogue nail gun. Oh, fucking nail guns. If They do not work like that. I know. But every time I see a nail gun, and believe me, there are a lot of them. Yeah. There are a lot of nail guns. Every time I see the nail gun, I always laugh. I yeah. always... They don't work <laughs> like that. Diesel does not blow up like that, and nail guns don't work like that. I know. <laughs> but that scene with the nail gun highlighted a massive problem for me with this film. What's that? And it's in the scene, you've got the, the goth guy and his girlfriend, and the other two who have gone to warn them. They're working late in the DIY store, or wherever it is they are. And yes. that scene is so busy, they... It's so contrived, and they spent so long setting it up just for that little nail gun bit. I, I know, I know. And there's, if you look at it, to me, especially when the camera backs off for a wide shot, it looks to me like a theatre stage where they're changing the backgrounds while you're watching. Because there's <laughs> yeah. always there's something moving in every bit of the screen, and I just thought, yeah. this is so contrived, this is bollocks. This just does not play with the, the surprising nature of someone dying suddenly. Because although any of those people have got to do is turn their head to the left slightly and they'll see things moving. Right. On right. their own. And I just and, thought, nah. And, and who, who, let's be honest, who leaves two teenagers to work alone in what can only be described as a gigantic as the Walmart or Home Depot exactly. or Home exactly. Store? Where's the health and safety stuff? officer? <laughs> Where, where's something? There's, yeah, there's no supervisor there, and I know, you know when, there's when two of got, them, but fuck, yeah, yeah, it's... We got the idiot using, you know, power tools. And the fact that <laughs> he's using power tools badly, he's almost stumbling <laughs> around like Benny Hill shooting this thing <laughs> off, and you've got ladders falling over, you've got... And they're very aware that it's happening, there's scaffold poles moving, ladders moving, <laughs> walls falling yes. down, and nobody's going... Hang on, should we step outside? Because this place seems to be falling over. I know, right? It's just, yeah, it's <laughs> they're completely oblivious to the fact that nails are falling on the floor, <laughs> that the ladder's falling over, that the handbrakes come off the forklift, and it's all making noises that we at the audience can hear, and they're stood next to them, and nobody's noticing. I know, exactly. And I just thought, no, this is taking me right out, this has. Yeah, it's th that, that whole... Home Depot store thing is just like, nope. 
Oh, what was the other no. scene as well? Oh, the oh. other scene. This is the one with the guy who gets his head crushed with the weights. Yes. In yes. the gym. Now. Yes. <laughs> again, I get what they're going for and I get what they're doing, but it's so badly done. He's looking at the screen with this intense, you know, looks like he's having a shit look on his face and he's putting all these weights and he's basically, I mean, you could edit what he's saying and basically you say rah, rah, America, couldn't you? You know, I'm a bad yes. motherfucker, rah, 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 and all that. And you go and just oh, crush God. his fucking head. Yeah. If you don't do it, I will. Right. <laughs> and you think, and, and who, who has swords hanging off the wall right above a working gym machinery, you know? Apparently the people in Final Destination do. So there's so much vibration from all these machines going on, and you've got two broadswords hanging on the wall right above them, that are held on just by, like, one nail, enabling them to swing down. One rusted nail that's halfway out. It's terrible. Yeah. It's like, no! No, 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 no! I know. It's so dumb. Yeah. It's like, Oh, no, it's just annoying me, Fondo Station 3. Yeah, it, it's, they, they're very aware of what they're doing, but they're not doing it to the way they did it in part two, if you know what I mean. Yes, yes, yeah. that is correct. And yes. to me, it just, it's, it's entertaining, it's enjoyable, but yeah, something missing. Yep. And. For sure. I'm just going to look up my score because, again, it was weeks ago since I watched it. And believe it or not, because of the opening scene and the tanning bed scene, I did give it three stupid nail guns out of five. <laughs> well, fun enough, so did I. Okay, okay. Yeah, I gave it three. Like I said, I was entertained by it, but perhaps for the wrong reasons. <laughs> yeah. And I know it's a film where people are dying in the most contrived way, so perhaps you're not supposed to pick holes in it, but... I don't know, it just, that scene in the DIY store where everything's falling, it's like a, it's almost oh. like a farce. It's <laughs> like a yeah, carry on film. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, things are happening, the scenery is moving, the machinery is coming alive, and no one's noticed, they're still talk, shouting at each other. Yeah. It's like, oh, no, yeah. But entertainment wise, it's still just about in the realms of being fun. So yeah, yes, I gave it a yes. three as well, same as you. I get the feeling we might be going a bit lower with the next one. I think we might. Let's play the trailer. Let's play the trailer. Hey, how old is this place? You got me. We're fine. That's why they built the fence there. gonna die, alright? This is gonna be a crash. Have you lost your mind? You saw it before it actually happened. We're alive and so are a lot of other people. I keep having these visions. I see how the next person was gonna die. What do you mean, the next person? Survivors in the accident. What if we weren't meant to survive? What's gonna happen to us? I think we can stop it. Look out! The Final Destination. The Final. Even though there's the. one more. From 2009. Directed by David R. Ellis. Again. Woo. Starring now, Bobby. As a, Bobby. as a reminder, David R. Ellis did number two. He did. Right. So this should be good then. 
Right. right. Starring Bobby Campo, Nick Zeno, Hayley Webb, Krista Allen, Andrew Fischella, Justin Wellborn, Laura Grease, and nobody else I've heard of. No yes. Tony Todd this time. Now, and, have, do you have IMPB open? I do. Are you looking at the cast? I have them here, yes. Would you please read the, read the character name for Krista Allen? Uh, Krista Allen. Milf. <laughs> Is she? Um, Let's just have a look at the picture. Well, I'll be the yes. I'll be the decider of that. <laughs> what? Really? <laughs> well, I would. But anyway, all right. <laughs> it's just when I I was you know when I when I was uh, taking notes I was open up I to look at the director and I just went oh lord really they couldn't come up with a better. She's name. the one with the two kids, isn't she? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'll get there in a minute. Okay, let me do the synopsis. <laughs> Uh, after a young man's premonition of a deadly race car crash helps save the lives of his peers, death sets out to collect those who evaded their end. Oh, that's a familiar plot, isn't it? Yes, yes, it is. So, yeah, I saw this on DVD when it came out. Um, I quite liked it at the time. I did, It got a lot of bad reviews, and I thought, that's a bit unfair, really. I thought it was okay. And watching it this time, I think, no, perhaps they were right. It's not great, is it? Right. It's not great. It, it's, it starts out okay. Yeah. I think the problem is this time there's... And apologies to anyone who has gone on to success, but I didn't recognise it. I didn't recognise anyone in the cast. Uh, me neither. Me, no. me neither. It's lacking that little bit of star, or star power, you know what I mean? A, a familiar face. Yeah, yeah. I didn't like any of the characters, even nope. the, one, the ones nope. we're supposed to like. My favourite character, my favourite character was the Nazi redneck at the rally at the beginning. <laughs> and if he's your favourite one, you're onto a bad thing, aren't you? Yes, yes, you are. But you're right. There's you really don't care about any of the characters. He's the only one who seemed genuinely upset when his girlfriend died. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, it's. I mean. Having the, the, the race car setting, I suppose, yeah, why not? We've done everything else. Again, it was well shot, it was well made, but the characters, I didn't care about any of them. Yeah. Yep. The, Milf, the Milf character we mentioned, again, she didn't strike me as a woman who'd have two kids dragging around the shops like that. Right, right. Not, not that I'm to yeah. judge on people like that. Um, yeah, it's insisted on getting her hair done at that particular time, yes. Yes. And she walks into that shop just as it's about to close and asks yep. for it to be done. and they, they wouldn't do it. Yeah, no. no uh, well, I wouldn't anyway. If you go down the car list on IMDb, have you got it open in front of you? Yeah. Look for the actor Phil Austin. Yep. Milf's husband. <laughs> just thought I'd point that out. <laughs> That's the level of character we've got here. He hasn't got yep. a name. Is that on his CV? Yep. I played the MILF's husband in, fin in the Final Destination. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is the shortest one out of the lot. It's only it's not long over an hour, this film. It's about an hour and 15 minutes, something like that. Thankfully. Thankfully. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it's got the most kills in it, I think. I mean, let me just refer to this fan page. Yes, yeah. it's got... Well, yeah. hang on, hang on, hang on. You sure it's not tied with the last one? No, according to this list here, Final Destination 3 has a uh, 29 kill count. Oh, see, I never count the opening ones. Uh, yeah, always, this one has yeah, 70. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Then. But that sort of plays into this film where it sounds to me like they had an idea for a load of kills and then they tried to write a story around it and there's some yep. really jarring scenes in it. You know, there's a cinema scene in this one, isn't there? Yes, and there's the, the getting a test and sucked out through the pool scene. And yeah, there, there yeah. are some really good ones. They're good kills, but when you're watching the film, it doesn't flow, does it? Yep. We're no, at a racetrack, and then suddenly everyone's at a funeral, and in the next scene, one of them's at the cinema, and you know what I mean? It, it's, it, they're, I don't know, they're trying to put together a puzzle, and then, you know, they, they put together the middle, now they're trying to find the wraparound, and it just doesn't work. Yeah, and I think <sighs> this maybe would have worked better as a series of shorts, or yep. even a scene out of a sketch show, because, say, the yep. kills are good, but... There's no connective tissue. Yes. Apart yes. from all of these people were in a scene together at the beginning of the film. I still have IMDb open on it. It's looking at Milk's husband as a character name. Go look for the character name of Laura Grice. Oh, go on then. Uh... On my IMDb, it's a couple above Milk's husband. Racist's wife, yeah. <laughs> yep. 
and go two above that, and you've got racist, <laughs> played by Justin Wellborn, and yeah, yeah. he's he played the uh, the Nazi guy. Yeah, not something you'd want to put on your CV, is it really? Yeah, yeah, it's we've gone to that level of yeah. But uh, has, and, he got any, and, has he got any other credits? Know, go on. At the end of the day, this just isn't that credible. Like it's average. It's average. I think that's praising it quite highly to be honest it's watchable if you were say like we were doing a whole marathon of them all and yeah we'll watch that but considering what came before it it's a big step down i think yeah yeah so i watched um i started one night well maybe about three weeks ago watched one then two then three then four and if you watch them repetitively like that you really start to go oh god make it stop yeah, I, I did the same thing. I watched them over a few nights. Yeah, it's I, tough. I think I watched one and two on the same night and had a really good evening. Oh. Yeah, and then I watched three and four, <coughs> three and four successively and went, oh, uh, okay. Then I watched five right. on its own. Did this one have another nail gun scene in there? Did this one have a what? This one had a nail gun scene too, right? Did it? Let me have a look. I think it did. No, we've got falling cars impaled by metal poles. Towards the end of the flip. Towards the end. <laughs> oh, I like this. Kill number 17, the character. Inside sucked out through his rectum by a pool drain. Yes. Yeah, yes. I like that one. Uh, no, there's no nail gun in this one. You sure? Yeah. All right. Well, nobody might have gotten killed with it, but it's certainly... We've got cut in half by a flaming car hood, decapitated by a flying tyre, tow truck explosion, lawnmower, eye socket... Uh, blasted into a metal... F- oh, the guy with the metal fence. When he gets pushed into it and it sort of slices him into different yeah. pieces. Yeah, again, I also think the CGI in this is worse than the earlier films as it well. It is. It is. Yeah. It is. Everything about this, fo- this film feels cheap. I think that's yep. what it is. And it's just like, let's just... We've got a release date. Let's just get it out. Yep. Uh, ran over by ambulance. Fire put out water sprinklers. Run over by a truck. No, there's no nail gun in that one. Okay, okay. I, I don't think there was a kill, but I think there was, you know, somebody dropped the nail gun and it just started shooting and you thought somebody was going to kill Oh, them. they might have done this, just list the kills. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 okay. So, yeah, not a lot else to say about The Final Destination. Um, watch it for completion's sake, but otherwise I gave it two non-nail gun deaths out of five. I gave it two and a half. Oh, you went more than me then. I did, I did. Ooh. Let me make a note of that, but I won't remember. Right, okay then, one more to do. Let's play the trailer. I see that it's been quite a while since your first consultation. What made you decide to take the leap today? A lot is going on in my life. I don't want to miss anything. When we're done, you'll have perfect vision. Do you know what my assistant's giving me an incomplete file? I'll be right back. Hold on, you're leaving? Is that supposed to be happening? You're not supposed to be here. You were supposed to die on that bridge. Lucky few survived a disaster. And then one by one, death comes for them all. Are you saying that we can't stop this? There's an answer for everything. It's killed. Or be killed. Nobody's safe! Final Destination 5 from 2000. Make it stop, Chris. Just make it stop. 
that, make it stop. Sub, Final Destination 5 Make It Stop from 2011. <laughs> directed by uh, Stephen Quayle, starring Nicholas D'Agosto, Emma Bell, Ellen Rowe, Miles Fisher, PJ Byrne, Courtney B. Vance, who none of whom I've heard of, and we do have Tony Todd coming back. Well, I will say this. Mm-hmm. Courtney B. Vance has done quite a bit of things. Um, Space Cowboys, Hunt for the Red October. I do recognize his face. I have seen him in things, yeah. But he's one yeah. of them, oh, it's that guy. Yeah, and he's, he did a lot with... Uh, God, what did he do? He did one of the Law and Orders over here. He, I don't know. Major Case, SVU, regular Law and Order. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, he did. He did. I, I really... When he's in a movie, I'm like, oh, okay. I, I like his, his acting. He's... Actually, it shows him in the new uh, HBO series called Lovecraft Country. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, there we go. So if we ever get round to looking at that, we'll, we'll know his face. Yeah, yes, we will. Cool. Okay. Synopsis of this one is the same as the other bloody four. It's yeah. sur- survivors of a suspension bridge collapse learn there's no way you can cheat death. So I like the suspension bridge collapse. I thought that was cool. It's very well done. I love films set in San Francisco. Yeah. Part of the problem is, beyond that, I didn't care one lick about any of the characters. Okay. There's one death in this I particularly like, and we'll get there in a minute. Hang on. Uh, I got. Uh, I just got to I gotta read through all the, the notes I took, because I want to see if I can predict your... Okay. Hmm, predict your death. Okay, I don't... I'm it's the sure. one thing, okay. when people say Final Destination 5, it's the one thing I think of. Okay, okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, I saw this when it came out. I must admit, when I saw this, I got to the point of, oh, let's just rent this one because we've seen all the others. We may as well watch this one. Yeah. A bit yeah, like when you sure. get to Source 6. <laughs> oh, go on. Go on, then. I know. I know. Yeah, I think it's it's an improvement over the fourth one. Have we ever covered the Saw franchise? No. Okay. We will do. I know. All right, go ahead. Sorry. This is an improvement, I think, quality-wise. It feels more like a proper film rather than the sort of demo thing they put together for the fourth one. Again, I don't like the characters. I don't like the actors particularly. It's great to have Tony Todd back to add a little bit of credibility to it. Yeah. I think you needed it after that fourth one. It has one of my favourite kills in the series, which Myron is going to guess right now. It has to be... i I got to go with the gymnastics one. We have a winner. That was pretty righteous. I got it. That, that one was pretty good. Yeah. That to me came back to the Final Destination 2 thing of something just happens very suddenly and the film just skips to the next bit. Yep. It doesn't give you enough time to take it all in. Yep. Yep. The girl doing the gymnastics on the, on the beam there, she jumps off, lands awkwardly and breaks her spine, which I think is great. Now, I have the one major problem that I have with this whole movie, unless I have missed the boat. Go on. In the previous movies. Mm-hmm. Or at least in one previous movie, they talked about if you bring a new life into the world, you can stop the chain. Yes. In this one, they talk about you have to kill someone. Yeah. Did that, did that change? Did I miss the boat? Um, it changed. Well, it changes from film to film, doesn't it? Where they try and okay. figure out how to do it. And it's a bit like, you know, when how do we kill off Freddy Krueger? Well, we'll do it this way. Oh, well, that didn't work because there's another film. Gotcha. gotcha. Basically yeah. what it is. Let's yeah. bring a life into the world. Oh, that didn't change the plan. Okay, well, let's kill somebody. Oh, that didn't change the plan either. Oh, let's reboot the whole thing. Yeah. Because that one particularly stuck out stuck out to me, that that was just like, oh, really? So we, we, we were scraping the bottom of the barrel on that explanation. Yeah, they, they'd run out of ideas. They're basically trying to sort yeah. of, you know, what can we do? Um, I'm looking at the character names from uh, this film. You know, I said earlier on about um, Luton, Val Luton. Yeah. There's characters in here called Luton. Ooh. Oh. There's, there's a character in here with the surname Hooper. There's a couple of characters with the surname Friedkin. Oh, nice. So there's lots of little nods. There's a castle. I wonder if that's a um, nod to William Castle, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. So, yeah. Final Station 5, it's... I don't think it's the massively brilliant send-off that the series sort of wanted it to be. Who's your favourite character in this? There's characters in this film? Yeah, I know. Who's your favorite though? Tony Todd. <laughs> no, not me. I, my favorite is the uh, uh, Middle East or not Middle Eastern um, Oriental mother that comes in 
and cracks the dude's back and puts acupuncture needles in. She's my absolute favorite. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a really good scene, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like that. <laughs> I don't know what her name is. I don't no, know I can't remember the character name. Yeah, yeah, he thinks he's going to get uh, a little personal touch off a hot, young yeah. uh, masseuse. Yeah. It, it turns out to be... Uh, right. Well, she, I'm sure she's a very nice lady, but she turns out to be a little bit older. <laughs> yeah, a little bit stronger, a little bit rougher. Yeah, that's quite a <laughs> funny scene. Yeah, I did like I that. I like that. That was good. That was a good one. Yeah, that's the thing with this film, though. There, there's bits and pieces that you go, oh, someone's thought yeah. about that. Yep, yep. And then there's other bits you go, oh, why did you do that? So what did you think of the end? Well, yep, yeah, let's... Well, we're all spoilers all the time. Yes, the ending of this film goes into the beginning of Final Destination 1. one. So it yep. makes a big loop. Um, Very clever. At the time, I, I, I quite it. liked yeah. it. I like the way that when you sit and think about it, the way the film plays out, there's no references to modern technology or what we would have had in 2011 that sort of dates it. Right. Um, yeah, you only have to have someone appear with a smartphone or something and you go, well, that didn't happen in 2000, so... Right, right. No, no they, had, they had the flip phones in range, so... Yeah. yeah, so someone's obviously thought about it and I think that's... That's the best thing I can say about Final Destination 5. Someone's thought about it and they put a bit more care into it. Yes. As a film, uh, it's better than the fourth one. I didn't enjoy it as much as the first two. It's sort of on a level with the third one, but only slightly less. It's slightly lesser, I think. Yeah. I I liked it about as much as the fourth one. Yeah. The, oh, it was the fourth the, one. Yes. The gymnastics scene and the end scene for me were kind of redeeming. I only gave it 2.5. I gave it three. Really? I gave it three. I'm surprised. Okay. The same as Final Destination 3. I've actually gone back to a letterbox review I wrote in 2012, the last okay. time I watched it. Okay. And I put, it's better than part four. It has Tony Todd in it. The deaths are fun, although the CGI is ropey, and it ties in nicely with the original. That's about, that actually is a... That pretty much sums it up, I think. Yep, yep. Yeah, it's not essential, to be honest... I think you could just go with the first two films and end the series there. Yes, yes, you could. You certainly should have ended after the third one. Yeah, definitely after the third one. But in saying that, out of all the horror franchises that we've covered and all the ones that are out there, Final Destination is relatively consistent. Yes, I absolutely would agree. It, it doesn't have the wild swings that Leprechaun or Halloween has, where no. you go from the, the euphoric great movies to... What have they done to my favorite franchise? What yeah. have they done to my favorite franchise? Why is Buster Rhymes in this film karate <laughs> kicking Michael Myers? What have they yeah. done? <laughs> yeah, it's weird. They've got their idea, their core idea, and each film sticks to that. And there are slight variances, and there's variances right. in, in the quality of the filmmaking. Right. But they, yeah, they never veer off into. They don't go into space. They don't turn into an advert for right. toys. They don't right. go up. They don't. Do the old, it was Roy the Ambulance Man all the time. Right, you know? right. So, yeah. So the variances that we've got from the best to the low is really to do with the quality of the filmmaking and the writing more than it is sure. to do with how shit the film is, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I know exactly what you mean. Probably not I know exactly. wording it very well, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, but no, that, it's very true. I mean, you know, it, it's, it's very, very true. With that in mind, it's a it's a difficult franchise, I think, to really delve in, dive in and analyse because it is so much the same thing in every film. It it really is. Yeah, and, I mean that's the strength and the weakness both at the same time. That yeah, that's a good, that's a good way of putting it. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's um, it, you know what you're getting. Yeah, you, you know what you're getting. It's like the Soul but, franchise. You know what you're getting. Yeah, well, even more so than the Saw franchise, I think. Well, not necessarily. The, it, but it's it's not like you're sitting down to watch a new Jason or a new Freddy or a new Halloween where you're like, oh God, please let this be better. Please let this be better. You know, there's <laughs> not that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it, it's like, okay, I know what I'm getting into. I know what it's going to be. Yeah, there's too much that can go wrong in those classic franchises. Right, right, for sure. Cool, okay. So they keep going on about rebooting this franchise. What do you mean oh, about that? I, no. No, 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 stop. Leave it alone. It's done. It's, it's been of done its five time. times. It's of its yep. time, and it's also dated quite well. I don't think you need to Correct. bring it back. You don't need any more sequels. You've tied it up nicely. Right. 
I could even say if you were going to do the franchise marathon, you could skip part four, just do one, two, three, and then five. Yeah, and I mean, yeah, it's just no, no more. We're done. Okay. Do you want to rank the films then? Yes. Start with the worst one. What was your worst one? The worst one? Yeah. Um, number number five. Really? Number yeah. four, number four for me. Next worst for me was number four. Next one for me was number five. Then the next one is three. Yep, same. And then the first one. Yep. And the second is my yep. favorite. Yeah, we're, well, apart from the four and five, we're pretty much yeah. in agreement. Which is really weird. Yeah, that's never happened before. Yeah, because yeah, usually I'm like, you know, yay found footage, yay bad movies. Good yeah, movies, well, though, at, least I, there, at least there was no fucking found footage. I'm working on one. Don't worry, I'll have one for next time. A Final Destination found footage film. Now that wouldn't be bad. Yes, it would. Not, not necessarily. Yes, necessarily. Now listen, now the thing of it is, you take your idea of a sketch show, right? You do an anthology, found footage, but you keep it to like an hour and 15 minutes. You got it. You, you could do, you, you could do, you know, oh yeah, that, that would work. That could work. <laughs> I love, the, if, if, I love the fact you have so much faith in that idea. It, It'll yeah. never happen. If there's any filmmakers out there who are serious, please don't take my idea. I, I second that. Please do not take his idea. <laughs> Please. Yeah, yeah, don't, don't, uh, yeah, don't do anything. Yeah, just leave it. Don't make any more found footage films. No, 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 make found footage films, just no more Final Destination. And no. especially not a Final Destination found footage paper. No. Uh, well, then again, perhaps if they'd done the, um, warehouse scene in part three as found footage, somebody might have seen the fucking room <laughs> falling apart as they stood there. <laughs> you know, I never noticed that. Until you said that, and I keep playing that scene over my mind. And it just stuck out to me so much. Like a, it was like a bad <laughs> comedy sketch. That's, that's exactly what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, nobody's <laughs> seeing this thing, this soundstage fall apart. Right. Anyway. Right. That's Final Destination done and dusted as far as I'm concerned. Right. So we've got no feedback this week because no one likes us. Correct. Then again, it helps if I check. <laughs> I haven't had any notification of anything, so I'm going to check live on air that everyone hates us. Uh, As I said, I'm well prepared for this one. Uh, no, no one likes us. Yes, we have. Bloody hell, we have. Blue sent us some f- feedback in. <laughs> yeah, she did. I forgot about that. Okay. Shall I read it out? You want to read it out this time or next time? Ah, I'm going to do it next time because it's quite long. Okay. So I will do that next time. Sorry, Blue, you took you took the time to write it, and I completely ignored it. So yep, it's all Chris's fault this time. A bit like Final Destination Four. Someone yes. wrote it, and we ignored it. <laughs> yes. I'll do that next time. Talking of next time, what are we doing next? I don't know. What do you want to do next? Well, we've had a couple of suggestions in from people, haven't we? Yes. I was thinking because we did five films this time, let's do one with a few less in it. Did you want to do Fulci's Gates of Hell? Hang on one second. Really, it's one film. They just did it five times. Could have just. <laughs> Anyways, <clears throat> okay. yes. Let's let's do let's do Fulci's Gates of Hell. Was it Steve Dinsmore who asked us for that? Was it Steve? Was it Steve or was it? Um... No, I can't remember now. Somebody did. <laughs> Apologies. Somebody did. Yeah, it did. Um, while I'm looking to see if it was Steve, Steve sent me a. Uh, song by a band called Void Lurker, all one word. Check that band out. You may like it. Okay. I'll have a listen to that. I am not sure if it was Steve that did that. I can't remember. It was one of those chats that we have where we all just throw ourselves in and Yes. Somebody anyway, that's what we'll do. We'll do the Gates of Hell trilogy, which yep. is the Beyond City of the Living Dead and House by the Cemetery. Which the funny story about the House by the Cemetery has the single most annoying child actor ever. <laughs> and hasn't the child actor tried to deny that it's his real voice? Oh, yeah, he's dubbed. You know, but it's, oh, God, it's bad. Well, we'll get there next time. Yep. We'll do that next time. I'm off on holiday week after next, so we're probably looking at September by the time we come back. Okay, okay. Cool. So it gives that us a little good. bit of a break after our two-year break that we've already had. Right. But we're we're much more regular now. We're, we're you know. We're as regular as an athlete eating lots of fibre. That's yes. how regular we are. Yes, that's how regular we are. Oh, well, I am anyway, but constantly shitting myself. Yeah. Anyway, that's more to do with the crap I eat. Right, 
Cool. Okay. That's Final Destination done. I'm off on holiday to hopefully leave the world behind for a week. So where are you? Are you going somewhere or are you doing a, st- as we call it here, a staycation where you just stay at home? <laughs> Considering the conversation we had earlier on, if I tell you where I'm going, you'll, you'll absolutely piss yourself. Yeah, you're going to South Wales. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> I am. You took you took the Mickey out of Southwest, South Wales, and now that's where you're going for our holiday. Yeah, I told you I do like South Wales. There's some lovely places along there. Yes, I'm going to an area called the Mumbles. Okay, which is not far from where Gore Blimey lives, so um, I can go and terrorise him while I'm down there. Are you gonna have like your computer down there? Are you gonna watch some Fright Fest while you're there? I am taking my laptop with me. I have some fiction work I want to get on with. Because I can't go on with it here because of my fucking neighbours keep disturbing me. So yeah, I've got a few ideas I want to get down onto paper or virtual gotcha. paper. Um, gotcha. Yeah, we can't go anywhere much because of obviously the COVID thing. So yeah, it's just going to be a week of me, my laptop, misses, and a few films to watch. Nice. Just gotcha. have a break from uh, from work for a week. Well, yeah, it's a break from work and it's a break from the same four walls you keep looking at. Exactly. Gotcha. Understand. Understand. Cool. So we'll be back in September with Fulci's Gates of Hell trilogy. Absolutely. I'm excited about that. So am I. I haven't watched them for a while. So uh, I know. Yeah, we'll get on to that. Brilliant. Yep. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. And we'll see you next time. Say goodbye, Myron. Goodbye, Myron. Bye. You're not supposed to be here. You're short of death. So you let death have somebody else in your place, and then you take their spot in the realm of the living, all the days and years that they've yet to live. And they take your place in death. Then the book's about.